Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. And this time I have something from Germany again. Something that is good. This is the Nine Springs. This is the Nine Springs Single Malt Whiskey Triple Cask. 45% ABV, 50 CLs, and it costs over here 49 euros, which is roughly around 50 some dollars. Oh, 55, 58 some dollars. Now, first of all, the bottle is very, very nice. Look at that. I mean, even if you take a look at the color behind this, so you do see here a wonderful brown with a little bit of a hue of red. So the first of all, they use virgin oak. So they bought white oak from America casts that were toasted and charred in number three. Then they bought um, barrels from ancient age, Buffalo Trace, also charred in number three or number four. And then they put this also in a Bordeaux fask, a cask that's for the finishing. So it's been in three different casks here in a total of three different years. Now this is batch number five and a few of my friends, my whiskey friends here in Germany said, Jason, Nine Springs, excellent whiskey from Germany. I said, never heard of them. Well, they said it just started five years ago um, and they're not very popular yet because they haven't done much marketing. I was like, uh, okay. So I, I, I did a nice little interview with someone who is a representative and then they sent that nice little interview then, and of course in German, I'm sorry. It was a whiskey fair here in Northern Germany and they sent that, um, the link to the owner and the owner contacted me and he gave me some samples, tried them. They were with a um, wine finish that I really didn't like. And I was going, I visited a different whiskey fair anyways and I said, hey, I'm within about an hour of you, could I drop by? And he said, yeah, come on over. And so I was there for a total of two hours and visited the distillery. This is actually a gift from the gift shop that he gave me. I like going to gift shops and getting gifts. <laughs> and um, some other little samples as well. And then what was really, really cool is, um, I have to pour a little bit here, is that there's going to be a whiskey castle here in Germany. So he, Bant, um, is a major employee employer in the region of Eichsfeld in Turingen, Germany. He has a beer brewery. So they produce, I'm going to say, a couple million bottles of beer a year. They're a major um, producer of beer in their region, and it's actually very nice beer, according to my wife and my son that also got some free bottles from them. And after 20 years of doing the beer brewing, um, they had enough money together to actually start the distillery and that's what they did the passion was from the beginning um, after they've set everything up and got big enough to finally say okay now we're going to also start distilling and many many people say especially in germany if you take someone who did schnapps and you let them make their whiskey it tastes like schnapps which is not always great if you take someone who does beer and then ask them to make whiskey it's going to be fairly good because that that wort is a brewer's beer. And so they know exactly how to make that brewer's beer into something as nice and all they have to do is distill it twice and everything's gonna be just fine. Well, as long as they have the right barrels, yes. And they leave it in there for the right time. So three years is not a lot. That's the minimum age over here in Europe. So my nose says, nice. I get some dark licorice. I get some mocha and espresso. I even get a light little bit like a, um, what was it? Cafe Americana, Americano. Um, that's a milk coffee. It's got some dark malt in there. Um, if I was to compare it to something that I've had before, I'm going to have to go up here to Westland, buried back a little bit there. Westland um, from Portland, Oregon. They have some very dark Munich malt that they use. They have some very, very heavily toasted malt that they use. And at the back of the, um, the box, it's in German, it says here, by the manufacturing of the Nine Spirit Spring single malt whiskey of the, um, the mash bill, as well as during the, um, wow, I forgot the word in English during the um, fermentation. They use different types of, of malted barley. 
that have been created in their own special recipe for their own use. So I talked to Bant and he, that's the owner, he said, I can tell you anything you want to know about the entire process. Don't ask me about one thing, which types of malted barley do we use? That's the secret. And so I really, really do suspect that they use a heavily toasted malted barley. So you can toast barley just a little bit and you can heavily toast it. And often that's called Munich barley and uh, Munich malt in the States. And I think he has a high percentage of that heavily toasted malted barley here. Very, very nice. Very nice aroma. Very toasted aroma. Let's try it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yep, a lot of that toastedness, the little bit of espresso, a little bit of that strong, dark licorice moment, and a tiny little bit of espresso. Okay, yeah, nice. This is a B minus in my book. Maybe a B minus minus. All right. Pro value for bra from value for money. Now, for a German whiskey, it's not overpriced, unfortunately. German whiskeys tend to cost more than Scottish whiskey. It has to do a lot of with the, um, they do everything by hand. They bottle this by hand. They distill it by hand. They actually um, pump it. Well, they don't have a pump, but they actually push the button by hand. No computers actually involved in the entire process here. And so, of course, it's going to cost more. If you go to the big distilleries where you have truckloads of, um, of barley being used in each and every batch, um, this is a totally different process. This is handmade. This is handcrafted. This is craft whiskey at its finest. I was actually in the uh, in his um, warehouse. <laughs> it's up in the attic. He actually has a nice little lift to bring the barrels up underneath the roof. His thesis was, yep, I want to have as much angel share as possible to make this actually taste as good as possible, as quickly as possible. Many, many, many um, distillers here in Germany want to put it down in the basement, keep it at the exact same temperature the whole time, have as little angel share as, as possible. And he did realize that, yes, it is good, but you have to be careful because you have too much angel share. It gets a little woody on you and you have to be a little bit careful here. And so he did notice that actually um, some of those barrels matured even quicker than expected or even wanted. All right. The last thing I'm going to mention is that whiskey castle that I started off with. So he was at um, he was in Japan the owner of the beer distillery that had started producing um, beer brewery that started to produce whiskey. And the mayor had invited him over to the sister city and they were there. And of course, they didn't speak Japanese. So they were in the hotel in the evening. They were drinking together some beer. And the mayor just said this nice little story. I got a castle. I don't know what to do with the castle. They've invested 10 million euros in this from European money, from federal money, from state money. They actually built a new road up there because the Pope had come to the region and they actually wanted the Pope to have a service at this at this big castle up there. Pope didn't go there. He went someplace else, of course, to a Catholic church and not to this um, castle. But the road was there. They had invested a lot of money. And basically it's there. They didn't know what to do. Um, and so they just said, let's make a whiskey castle. And they both laughed, ha, 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 ha. And then they both went home and the mayor called up Bant, the owner of the distillery brewery, and said after about three weeks, hey, I talked to some experts over here. That's actually a great idea. Let's go for it. And Bant was like, it was a, it was a dream. It's not real. He said, no, 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 no. We're going to pump money into this. It's going to be the ma a major tourist attraction for our region. People want to go to a castle but don't know why. They, they like whiskey. We're going to combine the two. We're going to be the first and only whiskey castle in all of continental Europe. And then he thought about it. He actually did the numbers and he said, hey, that might actually work. And so now they need 20,000 um, uh, visitors a year to break even. And hopefully that will be possible. Um, one distillery actually here in Germany has, I think, four to five times that much already in southern um, Bavaria. And so these n numbers are not utopian, but yet I really do hope that this works out. So um, if everything goes right, I'm going to be back at that whiskey castle after everything's finished. I'm going to do a live stream maybe from there and do some other, also some great events there, maybe even together with the owner. So um, good times are coming. Nine Springs. B minus minus. 
Value for money, C minus. All right, so if you ever get your hands on this, maybe I will make it possible or someone else will one day make it possible that this will be exported. If you're ever in Germany, ask someone about Nine Springs, they're gonna probably go, ah, uh, let me look. <laughs> and then they might find this actually very, very nice looking bottle here and very, very nice stuff. Thank you very much for listening, for watching, and for liking, subscribing, and telling others about this American and Germany tasting interesting, exotic, and very, very, um, yeah, special whiskey. All right. Thanks, you. Bye-bye.